The following program is produced by the Alliance of Youth Leaders in the United States, a child organization of American Youth Leadership Foundation. Please support us to make contributions to our great nation. Today I'm going to solve the number 25 on AMC 10B 2014. In a small pond, there are 11 little pets. In a row labeled 0 through 10, a frog is sitting on pet 1. When the frog is on pet n, where 0 is less than n less than 10, it will jump to pet n minus 1 with probability n over 10, and to pet n plus 1 with probability 1 minus n over 10. Each jump is independent of the previous jumps. If the frog reaches pet 0, it will be eaten by a patiently waiting snake. If the frog reaches pet 10, it will exit the pond, never to return. What's the probability that the frog will escape being eaten by the snake? Okay, so now I drew this 11 living pets mentioned in the question. Okay, so the frog starts from this number 1, and its goal is to escape this we pets by banging on number 10 and then there's a bad ending as well which is when the frog lands on number 0 it will get eaten by a snake and then, and then there's also some relationships to tell us the possibility that we can, the frog the frog actually actually can move between these mini pets let's take 6 for example the chance for the frog to go at a number. It's n1 minus n over 10, so it's 1 minus this time 6 over 10, that's equivalent to 2 over 5. So the chance to go back is n over 10, it's 6 over 10, which equals to 3 over 5. And it's working for all the 11 million pets, except for that one, because when you get to that one, you just die. So now we are looking for the possibility that we can escape starting from 1. However, we see that like, we can go to 1 and then go to like 8 and come back, go back and forth, back and forth. It's almost impossible because there are like, infinity ways. So, how do we solve this? Actually, there's a trick in this 11 way pets. Think like, why do they give us 11 way pets? Why not? It's a 10 or 12, why not even numbers? And why do they give us like n over 10 and 1 minus n over 10 as the possibilities? There's a special number in here, that's this 5. 5 is in the middle of everything. And also, for 5, I see the chance to go forward. It's 1 minus 5 over 10, which is just 1 half. That means the chance to go back is also 1 half. They are equal. That means whenever you find a way that you can get from 5 to 0, whatever in the middle, you can find a, a way that's symmetrical exactly about 5 that at the end lands to 10, the frog. So that means on really kind number 5, the possibility that this frog can escape it's just one half. And let's name that possibility of 5. So now we are looking for P1 because the same reason as P5, we got to know the possibility that we can escape from 1. However, we can just get P1 from P5. We just we can only find like, relationships between adjacent three pairs, like P4, P5, P3, and P4. So, how about we just start from P1 and then you want to get to P5. So there's some equations. P1, first, what is the possibility that we can go to P0 from P1? 
that is, according to the question, is uh, 1 over 10. And what's P0? P0 is just 0. Plus the chance to go to the next one. Go to, P2, go to number 2. It's 1 minus 1 over 10. So it's 9 over 10. And times P2. Just P2. We don't know P2 yet. We don't know P1 yet. But we can know their relationships. Next, P2 equals to the chance to go back is 2 over 10, which is 1 over 5 times P1. And then add the chance to go forward, which is 1 minus this. It's 4 over 5 times P3. Same thing for P3. Uh, chance to go back, 3 over 10 times P2 plus 7 over 10 times going forward is P4 and then P4 equals uh, going back it's 4 over 10 so that is 2 over 5 times P3 plus uh, 1 minus this is 3.5 3 over 5 times P5. And at the end, we know P5 already, that is one half. So, this part is the set of equations we have for now. And then, because we know this, there are all the relationships between adjacent apex. So, we will, we eventually, we can eliminate or cancel all the things in between P1 and P5. Okay. You can cancel P4s, P3s, and P2s. Just, uh, just leave P1 and P5. So, our goal now is just to solve this set of equations. So, this is the equation we got. But I actually want to change it to another form. So, this first one. See, here's P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5. But now we want to find, put all the larger term on the left hand side. And I already can smaller term on the right hand side. So P2 from this one to this one, we have to change them into P2 equals 10 over 9 P1. Same thing here, remove the P3 here, P2 there. And then move all the P4 here and then P3, P2 there. So after this, this is the five equations we are actually going to need to rename them one to five. Equation one to equation five. So now from equation 5, you have P5 equals 1 half, which also according to this equation number 4, you have 5 over 3, P4. But instead of saying P4 again, we use equation number 3 to replace P4, which is 10 over 7, P3, minus 3 over 7, P2. And in the original equation number 4, there's a 2 over 3 P3, but instead of P3, we use equation number 2, which is minus 2 over 3 and times 5 over 4 P2 minus 1 over 4 P1. And because of time constraint, which I'm just going to skip the calculation part. I just tell you, like, since there's only P3 here, and that makes a 50 over 21 P3. And P2 is here, P2 is here. So combine them, we get minus 65 over 42 P2. And then plus 1,6 P1. And here, instead of P3, we again replace the equation number 2 in. So it's 50 over 21 times 5 over 4 P2 minus 1 over 4 P1. And then for P2, you use equation 1 to change that into P1s. So minus 65 over 42 times 10 over 9 P1. And then don't forget, plus 1, 6 P1. 
And what you get is 125 over 42p2s. And again, we use equation number one. So that becomes this. Instead of p2, we use 10 over 9 p1. Right? And this stuff left are p1s. So minus 65 over 42p1 plus 1 over 6p1. And then now everything is p1. So what we get at first is 138 over 378p1. Uh, obviously, like 38, 78, they are all even numbers. So you can cancel something. And of course, 2. And at the end, you can actually cancel uh, this to 73 over 63, P1. Now, this equation became clear, right? Becomes here 1 half on left hand side equals here 73 over 63, P1. And we get P1 equals 1 half times 63 over 73, which is 63 over 146. And that's our answer choice C. If you enjoy this program, please join us. The Alliance of Youth Leaders website is www.aylus.org. We also have a Facebook group at www.facebook.com slash groups slash A-Y-L-U-S. The American Youth Leadership Foundation website is www.aylfus.org.